Hello my friends, it's Joey. Have you seen any bees yet this spring? Bees usually come out from their winter nest as soon as the flowers start to bloom and the temperature becomes about 10 or 15 degrees Celsius. Today, Kathleen, Queen Kathleen if you're fancy, is going to walk you through how to paint these amazing realistic bee watercolors. And she is going to tell us lots of cool facts about bees and helping to create a healthy home for one of our favorite pollinators. Before we get started, please remember if you like our videos, subscribe to our channel and click that notification bell. There are 25,000 different species of bees around the world. Bees help pollinate plants so we can have beautiful flowers, fruits, and vegetables. In fact, I learned from Queen Kathleen that if it wasn't for the bees, we wouldn't even have tomatoes. So grab yourself your watercolor cake pan, your watercolor brushes, and your field book, and let's get ready to get started. You will need some pencils and eraser as well. If you don't have any watercolors at home, you can go to 25 cats.com and we have a really cool watercolor bundle there and it's 20% off. The discount code is in the description box below. And if you love bees as much as I love bees, we also have a whole bunch of bee workshops happening at the studio. You can make these beautiful bee mugs. You can make this beautiful bee jug. You can buy this amazing bee kit from 25cats.com. It has enough ditto in there that you can make all three bees, like the ones you're drawing today, plus you can make a beehive. And for the little guys, we have our little bee bug kit. You can make your bee, your butterfly, your caterpillar, and even a little lucky ladybug. And in the studio, we're creating some beautiful bee watercolors. And in the studio, we're creating these awesome vases so you can plant your flowers for the bees in there as well. And also on 25 Cats, we have these amazing bug badges. We have amazing bug stickers and we have these awesome bug t-shirts. Let's all support the bees and keep them healthy and safe. Okay, Kathleen's ready to get started. Have fun everyone. And I will see you next time for another art tutorial. Bye. Hey everyone, thanks Joey. My name is Kathleen, Queen Kathleen if you're feeling fancy. And I'm so excited to share with you some cool facts about bees and how to paint your very own realistic bee using watercolor paints. Now, if you didn't know, bees are flying insects most well known for their great pollination skills. Bees pollinate by traveling from flower to flower, looking for nectar, collecting the flower's pollen along the way. The dusty pollen gets stuck on their fuzzy bodies and each time they visit another flower, some of that pollen gets stuck to them and onto the flower. When this happens, new plants get to grow. The most famous bee of all time is the honeybee. Like their name, honeybees are known for making honey, but they also do a lot more than just that. These bees have different jobs within the hive. There are worker honeybees, there's the queen honeybee, and the drone honeybee. Today, we're gonna learn how to draw all three. To start, grab your pencil and eraser. Let's get going. We're gonna start by drawing the Queen Kathleen bee, also known as the queen bee. The queen bee is the largest bee in the hive, and there's only one queen in each hive. First, draw a circle with a little point at one end. It's kind of like an upside down egg. Then draw the same shape again on the inside, only this time draw it a little smaller. This is the middle body part of the bee called the thorax. Next, draw two curved lines in the shape of a leaf. Make sure it's attached to the first shape you drew. This is part of the abdomen. A queen's abdomen is long and narrow. It's also the part of the bee that has stripes. We can draw four curved U's for the stripes. Then draw a half circle on top of the first egg shape for the head. Bees have large eyes on the side of their head. For the eyes, I'm gonna draw an oval on each side like this. Each eye is really cool because they're made up of tiny lenses that work all together. They can find light and shadow, which helps bees find the middle of a flower. For the antennas, draw a line that has one squiggle, then draw another. Bees have two antennas or antennae. Now for the wings. All bees have four wings, but the back wings are actually hidden underneath the first set when they're not flying. To draw the wing, start from the middle of the thorax, the first egg shape that we drew, and draw a diagonal line down about halfway to the body. A queen bee's wings are the same size as a worker bee's, even though her body is a lot longer. The outside points of the wings are the longest, so once you get about halfway down the body, start to make a curved line with two bumps. The whole wing shape is sort of like a curvy triangle. 
To finish the wing shape, draw a curved line from where we started to the other end of the wing with two bumps. Draw another bump on this part too, just like the letter U. A bee's wings are incredibly delicate and they have to be thin enough to beat 125 times every single second. You can draw lines in the wings called wing veins. This detail will make our bee wings look just like the real thing. Up next, we can draw the legs. All bees have six legs, but some of these legs hide underneath the wings. We can still draw the ends of the legs by drawing these little bubble letter leg shapes. Bees have a set of legs up near their head, but not on their head, and in the middle where the wings connect. Bees have very thin legs. To make them look just like a real bee, make sure to add a little curve for the leg too. Now you've drawn the queen bee. Honey bees make up only eight species of bees around the world. Most bees are solitary, which means they nest on their own instead of creating a hive with others. Digger bees and mining bees dig their own nests in the dirt and create ant-like hill openings to get in and out. Leaf cutter bees cut leaves for inside their tunnel nests. And mason bees use pre-made tunnels to nest near fruit trees and orchards. Bees don't have to be black and yellow either. Orchard bees are a type of mason bee, but they're blue. The western honey bee is the bee that we're drawing today, and it lives in colonies. In the summer months, colonies of honey bees can grow between 50 to 80,000 bees. Whoa. Most of the bees within the colony are called worker bees and drone bees. A drone bee is the bee that we're gonna draw next. To draw the drone bee, we're gonna start the same way we drew the queen, by drawing an egg shape for the body and a half circle for the top of the head. A queen bee and a drone bee look a little different. A drone bee is wider, but the stomach is a little bit shorter. You can draw an abdomen with two curved lines like this, making it a leaf shape. Remember the abdomen is the stripe part of a bee. So once you're ready, add three curved lines for stripes. Drone bees have one less stripe than a queen. You can draw ovals for eyes and curved lines for the antenna in the same way we did before. All drone bees are male or boys and they don't spend much time in the hive. Instead, they venture out to look for new hives. That's why drone bees have really good eyesight and have larger eyes than queens or worker bees. Some drone bees even have eyes that cover the whole top side of their head. A drone bee's wings are a little larger than a queen's too. Draw the wings the same way we did before, only this time make sure the wings go past the drone bee's body. Drone bees have to be really strong flyers, so they have really powerful wings. Draw the wing veins too, followed by six legs. Remember that some of the legs can be covered by wings, and the legs only attach the middle body part. Now we are done drawing the drone bee. Nice work! Next, we're going to draw the worker bee on the other side of the queen, so the queen is in the middle. Worker bees might be smaller than a queen bee, but they are incredibly important to a hive. Start by drawing that same upside down egg shape, but a little smaller this time. Then a half circle for the head and an oval for the eyes. Then two squiggly lines for the antenna. A worker bee's abdomen is shorter than the queen and the drone. The abdomen is the stripe part of the bee, so once you're ready, add three curved lines for the stripes. Worker bees also have one less stripe than a queen. Worker bees have many jobs in and out of the hive, including foraging for nectar. They can visit 2,000 flowers in a single day and travel five kilometers away. That's a lot of flying. Honeybees are really hard workers and will do anything to keep that hive alive. A worker bee's wings are the same size as the queen bee. The shape of the wings is kind of like a curvy triangle. Start with your pencil on the egg-shaped thorax and draw a curved line down to the end of the bee's body. Make another curved line back up and then another down from the first part, making a small U shape at the end. The shape of the wing should be a curvy triangle like this. You can draw those wing veins and those six legs.
Remember to go slow and add as much detail as you can, just like in the drawing. A bee's hind or back legs are covered in teensy tiny little hairs. These are the hairs that collect pollen from every flower. And pollen is what gives honey its beautiful color. Nice work! Okay, now that we're bee experts, let's become bee painting experts too. We're going to add brightly colored watercolor paints to make it magical. Grab your paintbrushes, watercolor cakes, and a jar of water. Start by adding some water to your first color with your brush. I like to test my color first on a scrap piece of paper. Oh, mine's a nice bright yellow, perfect for the beautiful honeybee. We're going to begin by adding a base layer of yellow paint to each of our bees. As you paint a bee, add more water to your watercolor cake and use the very tip of the brush to make a very nice outline. As a bee painting expert, you can help the bees in your own backyard by making a bee-friendly habitat. A habitat is where an animal, like a bee, lives. You can do this by planting friendly flowers. We love these. We've included a link in the description below for some East Van bees so you can plant some in your own garden at home. Watercolor paint also works best in layers. After painting our first layer of yellow, we're gonna add darker colors like oranges and browns to show off the bee's fuzzy body. You can test your color before you use it. Start with an orange and add a small brush stroke in all the same direction so it looks like it's fuzzy hair. Make sure not to add too much water to your brush for this part so your colors and lines stay nice and neat. Keep going with brown and orange, making the stripes and legs stand out too. To help the bees in your backyard, you can also participate in No Mow May. This is a movement meant to keep wildflowers on your lawn like clovers and dandelions, which are two of a bee's favorite spring flowers. To help the bees in early spring, keep your lawn growing and stop mowing. Okay, we're gonna keep adding layers of orange and brown paint to all three bees like this. Don't forget to paint the legs as well. I use my light brown for the legs. Once you're done painting layers of orange and brown for the fur, we're gonna add an even darker brown to the bees for the stripes and shadows on the legs. I use my darkest brown paint for this part. By using a variety of colors, our bees look very realistic. Wash your brush really well before moving on to the next part. And you can always help a bee by making a bee watering dish. Bees like to drink from shallow water so they don't fall in. You can create a bee watering dish by placing clean rocks in a shallow dish and filling it with water. Keep it near all of your bee friendly flowers and then you can join us on April 4th for a tutorial on creating a bee watering dish too. Next, pick up some white paint with your brush and begin to paint the wings. We want the wings to look real, so add more water to this part. Now, use your lightest blue paint to add a little color into the wings. This is called painting wet on wet because our wings are still wet as we're painting. Bee wings almost look shiny, so you can imagine that your bee's wings are reflecting the blue sky on a spring day. A fourth way to create a bee-friendly backyard space is to leave it be. Bees love natural yard spaces with lots of wildflowers, dirt piles, and places for healthy bee habitats. The final step to finishing your realistic bee watercolor painting is the details. Details in the wings, eyes, and dark shadows. Add some black to your brush and test it on some scrap paper to make sure it's not too dark. Begin using your tiniest brush to outline the wing veins we drew earlier. You can add some shadows to the tips of the wings like this too. Nice work. Now for the antenna and the eyes. The drone bee has the largest eyes, so paint most of the eye, but leave a tiny white part for a reflection. This is very important if you want your bee to look like a real honeybee. You can also add black details to the stripes too by moving your brush in the same direction for fuzzy hairs. Then add a black paint to your leg. Bees have fuzzy legs, so add hairlines just like you did on the stripes. Go ahead and add black fur details to each bee. A worker bee has the fuzziest legs because they collect nectar and pollen from flowers. Speaking of flowers, if you grow tomatoes in your yard, thank the bees. They help pollinate tomato flowers by buzz pollination. The vibration of their bodies while buzzing will make the pollen in tomato flowers fall out. Then when the bees visit each flower, they spread the pollen. Bees are incredible creatures and you are now a bee painting expert. Your realistic bee watercolor painting is finished. Sign your name in the bottom corner so we know it's yours and I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.